Well, I'm ready to call the meeting to order. I got six o'clock by my uh, atomic uh, phone. Roll call, please. Hartke. Here. Kibler. Maxwell. Here. Quisenberry. Here. Rosales. Schwartz. Here. James. Here. Okay, I need an approval of the agenda and any addenda. I move approval of the agenda. Second. I've got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion's approved. Next, we have approval of minutes. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Got a motion and a second. Any discussion? I thought I marked some, but I'm not going to worry about it. It was probably just a misspelled word. Uh, hearing none, I've got a... All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. I have no public participation, so we'll go right on through there. Communications. Deb, do you want to say anything about Mr. O'Connor at this point, or you, you sent out an email? Mm -hmm. He did pass away yesterday, and the visitation will be at St. Thomas Catholic Church in Philo from 9 to 11 on Saturday morning with the services to immediately follow, and we did send flowers from the county board. Thank you. And Mr. Maxwell, did you ever, if I may, did you ever get a chance to go by and see him? Yes, I did. Mm. Uh, let's see, it was on a Saturday. Uh, yes, my wife and I went down to see him. Uh, it's been a couple Saturdays ago, and uh, at that point in time, he was very weak, and uh, but he did recognize uh, the fact that we were there, and, and we, uh, he was able to laugh a bit about some jokes and things. So, yeah. Okay, thank you. Anybody else have any communications? Actually, I have this courtesy of Gary Maxwell, but the times are 9 to 11 a.m. Saturday morning, and the service will be at 11. Okay, so we'll move on to the next. We have a request for approval for release of the invitation to bid 2014-008, uh, ITB 2014-008, installation of boilers, air handlers, and digital controls at the Brookings Administration Center. And do we have a motion? I so move. Second. second. We got a motion and a second on the floor. Discussion, and I'll let. Dana, give us some information also. Thanks, Dan. This is just a, uh, a continuation, if, if you remember, the uh, 2015 uh, budget for capital asset. Uh, this was uh, uh, one of the items that was, uh, was listed. This is a significant item just because of the estimated cost, uh, $397,000. Um, our boilers, air handlers that we uh, are wish to replace as well as finishing up the digital controls will really uh, assist us here uh, at the building. Our boilers are just about ready to uh, to go. Don't know how long the uh, current ones will last, hopefully um, until this project is done through this winter. Um, we are taking advantage uh, by getting this out at this time. Uh, we would be taking advantage of uh, a slow time with contractors over the month of uh, basically December, January, February, March. Uh, when they'll be looking for work, hoping to uh, uh, get a good competitive price. Uh, we also are doing it this time because we want this work to be uh, uh, done over the late spring. Uh, we'll allow the contractors to actually start with the, with the larger pieces of equipment, the boilers, the air handlers, uh, March 23rd. Uh, project needs to be done by uh, May 1st. Uh, does give them enough time. Uh, they can come in the building prior to that, certainly 
stretch out conduit and uh, uh, start stringing stuff uh, along uh, to get this uh, the project uh, completed in a timely manner. Uh, the May 1st, uh, besides getting it done and getting ready for warm weather, uh, May 1st uh, also allows us enough time to complete the uh, DCEO uh, paperwork. Uh, we've already received uh, prior approval uh, for a grant up to about $120,000. It's in the document, I believe. Um, and we will file for that as soon as the project is done, uh, but it has to be on file uh, in their office prior to May 8th uh, to make sure that we get uh, uh, the dollars for this fiscal year uh, for DCEO. So, Dana. Any, yes, sir. The 120 is for the current project, not the I'm uh, sorry. boilers. Yes, uh, I apologize. Uh, I believe that's $40,000 for uh, this project. Um, uh, there, unfortunately, uh, not as much uh, return uh, from DCEO on uh, uh, the boilers and air handlers as uh, they were for the project we're currently doing. So, any questions? Okay, we got a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, this moves on. Okay, next is we have the facilities director. It gets released at this point, right? Yeah, yeah it goes out. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to clarify what moves I, on meant. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying, Mr. Quisenberry. Uh, next is facilities director's report. Uh, Dana, you want to take those? Yep. A uh, quick update on the Brookings Administrative Center Energy Efficiency Project. Uh, if you remember, uh, Alpha Controls was issued a contract on uh, August 22nd of this year um, to implement uh, ventilation improvements, digital control upgrades uh, for multi-zone units, fan coils, uh, uh, et cetera. Um, it is designed, and uh, we anticipate uh, having an energy return, energy savings of about 27% with electric and gas. Uh, the project uh, is costing $139,000 uh, with the DCEO uh, has already given us approval for up to $120,000. Uh, obviously significant and helpful in uh, helping furnish other projects uh, down the road for us uh, in terms of uh, capital asset um, Alpha has been here uh, at Brookings since October 1st. Uh, during that time, they've uh, uh, started with their communications network. All their controllers, uh, everything that they're putting in is wireless, so they've got to build a wireless network within the building. Uh, uh, they've already put in their server. Um, this week, they actually started on uh, air handlers number uh, five and six, putting in controls and, uh, and running signal cable uh, and uh, uh, control cables, rather, uh, as well as uh, next week, they'll start with two more, four and five, the following week, one and two. Um, they shall complete this project by December 24th. Um, it's important uh, for us to get it done then as well. So we are pushing them uh, so that we can uh, uh, file with the DCEO for our grant money, uh, which we hoped and anticipate receiving by the end of January, middle part of February at the latest. Thank you. Good Questions? On. Hearing none, I'll move on. Uh, Brookings Generator Project. Uh, Barbara Diatley was issued a contract on uh, September 16th. Uh, the cost of that was uh, $79,000 and some change to uh, construct, to build and install basically a, a backup power generator for IT services. Uh, we currently have uh, none in the building here at Brookings. Uh, as uh, a number of you saw as we took a tour in Brookings, uh, Five, six months ago, uh, we were in dire need of, uh, of putting in a, a backup system since all uh, computer uh, operations uh, flow through Brookings as well as the communications for courts, sheriff's office, uh, and so forth. Um, GHR was hired to design the work that was done uh, on about 10 months ago, uh, and then we hired him as well to uh, run the project, uh, to put the bid document together. Um, that price was $10,400. Uh, we negotiated that price with him uh, when we had an estimate that the uh, cost was going to be in excess of about $130,000 or $40,000. Uh, when we bid it out, it was, came in at $79,000. Great for us. 
Uh, however, we already negotiated a contract with, with GHR, but they've been terrific uh, to work with and doing a great job with following up with, uh, with the contractor. Uh, contractor has been very busy. They started uh, October 1st here in the building uh, pulling conduit. You don't see it in the hallways as you walk by because it's uh, being run uh, above the ceiling. Uh, they've got to move uh, a conduit to, to the outside uh, underneath basically where uh, IT services is. They've drilled through the uh, floor. Uh, there's a subsequent document that's a field report that was just taken uh, from this week. Gives you a little indication of uh, what's transpired with some uh, photos uh, that I laid out on your uh, desk prior to the meeting. Uh, but things are going great uh, with Barbara Diatley, their uh, electrician, and it differs on the uh, report. Um, uh, Lucas McGill, uh, the engineer with GHR, has got another um, project that he's working on who is using Anderson um, electricians. And uh, this project here at uh, Brookings, we're using Aladdin. Uh, they were part of the Barbara Diatley team. So. I apologize for the air, but I just caught that uh, walking into the room. Uh, completion for the generator should be uh, December 12th. Um, I say should be. Uh, we anticipate uh, that everything will be done by then, uh, but we still do not have a final date of delivery on the generator. It's been ordered. It's been ordered for a month, um, and we're waiting and hopeful that by uh, next week we'll get a... a, a drop dead uh, delivery date. Um, one of the reasons that the project was actually $79,000 uh, um, versus uh, over 100 uh, when we were talking about trying to locate where the generator was going to be housed, um, pouring the pad, we initially thought it was going to be outside of the building, typical to a lot of our facilities. Um, and when we couldn't find a suitable uh, location, we said, well, let me ask the question, why can't we put it inside the the quad or the, the grass area behind the windows over here. Um, it would be closer to our mechanical room, uh, shorter runs of uh, conduit and uh, wire. Um, so it really was a win-win and saved us ultimately uh, a lot of dollars. Uh, pad's been poured uh, back there. We will have to crane the uh, generator over the top of the building. Uh, we'll make sure that uh, that Deb is out of her office that particular day as we do that, uh, since she's very Still close to it. Yeah. <laughs> we'll have Gordy help, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, we anticipate finishing up the 12th, and uh, it's moving along nicely. Does that mean we don't have to build a fence? Uh, we, no we do not need a fence for the generator. You are correct. It's uh, very well protected with the, with the building. Any questions? Third update, uh, it was, it's been reported, I think, in paper and as well as on the radio. Um, <laughs> we had a little issue. We had a couple issues, actually, at the, uh, at the courthouse. On, um, on Thursday, October 23rd, actually, I was over at about 8 o'clock at the courthouse and noticed uh, uh, water on Elm Street, uh, basically just behind the uh, loading dock on Elm between there and the post office reported it to the water company. Uh, we got put on a waiting list. They said they'd be out when they would get to it. Uh, unfortunately, Friday night, the 24th, about 9 o'clock, it pops. Um, <laughs> it pushes up uh, an immense amount of uh, asphalt. Uh, big hole, meet the water company out there. Um, they claim it's uh, the fire suppression system line, which would mean that it's on the county's dime. Uh, and not uh, Illinois American Water. Um, so I was uh, able to get uh, cross construction over here on Saturday, that next Saturday. Uh, we started digging about 10.30 in the morning and dug till about 5 o'clock. By the time we finally found it, it was the valve, which was a good thing. Um, yeah, the valve actually belongs to Illinois American Water, and uh, it's on their dime now. Um, Subsequent to that, <laughs> we found they had another leak in the uh, main water line, which they fixed uh, late Saturday night. And then they, uh, unfortunately, when they fixed that, they crushed a sanitary line that uh, is about a foot underneath their water main, and they had to come back and replace that on Monday. Uh, and they've had to replace a lot of street, um, and which is completely done now except the uh, painting. Um, but the other item, which is a bit unknown yet, uh, the post office, 
folks uh, had significant water. We had about a foot of water on, on Elm Street, and it was running down their exterior stairs. So they, they had a good 8 to uh, 12 inches of water in the basement. And, uh, but that's been turned over to uh, Illinois American Water. Um, so we're almost done with, with that, with just a little bit of painting left. But the other incident that occurred, uh, unfortunately not on the same uh, night that we lost the fire suppression, but uh, October 29th, uh, we had a small fire, no damage other than an elevator motor. Um, but when the elevator motor uh, tripped out for, for whatever uh, reason, it also took out a uh, main breaker uh, to the building, uh, as well as when the smoke hit the fire alarm. We had a, a building-wide fire alarm, had to clear the building. So uh, there was no damage from uh, smoke or the fire. The, the, the actual flame was very minimal. It was on the motor itself. Uh, that's been replaced. Uh, elevator is back up and working, and uh, there is no smoke residue. There's no nothing. We were quite honestly very fortunate. Um, Put it out. Actually, uh, one of our uh, court security uh, officers, uh, court security, is in charge of making sure that the the building is uh, is secured and uh, folks get out of the building. Sorry, it was a staff member. It was a staff member, and uh, their next job after they make sure that it's clear is to find the location. Uh, and assist with uh, the fire department, and he was down there. Happened to be a you know, fire uh, uh, portable fire hydrant, a chemical one, and he just he sprayed it, quick spray, one spray, and it was out. Hardly any flame, but there was a significant amount of smoke. Uh, it took about an hour to clear the basement. So, um, but uh, all ends well. Um, we didn't have to pay. My guess is the bill on the Illinois, Amer Illinois American Water is probably six figures. Uh, it's about 30 yards of uh, street. Uh, it was, you know, four feet down, plus in the sanitary line was another two feet. Um, insurance from uh, post office. Um, it was, uh, it was impressive. So, thank you. Any other questions or conversation? Next up for uh, some of the paperwork that, uh, that I handed out, if you take a quick peek at that, just kind of a, uh, an overall uh, quick sketch of our budget. We're, we're in, we've done really a, what I think is a good job. We've had some challenges this year. Um, we are going to be short, so we are asking for a budget amendment of $37,000. Um, we've covered a number of uh, additional items. Uh, we had issues at the satellite jail with mold and bacteria. Uh, the sheriff uh, and I agreed that the sheriff would pay for the kitchen. We would take care of the showers. Uh, showers is going to be a little bit more money, uh, but we've spent about 22000 for service master and cleaning up uh, with the showers. OEHS, which is a testing agency, uh, testing mold, uh, both uh, on the wall floor as well as any airborne, um, as well as the bacteria. Um, and then to fix the problem, uh, had to hire a, a company called Santa Glaze to, to put a product up on the wall that will make it a lot easier for um, the, uh, the inmates and uh, custodial staff to, to do cleaning. Um, the inmates are basically responsible for cleaning things behind locked doors uh, in terms of cells, showers, uh, kitchen, so forth. Uh, we'll take care of uh, floors in, uh, in the other areas. Uh, but uh, So we're working with, uh, with the Sheriff's Office correction staff to, to try and, and ramp up their cleaning process. Part of the problem with the showers, uh, frankly, was the, there was a product put on the shower about 15 years ago. It's a Corian, and it was uh, you know, glued, placed on the wall. Um, the inmates who have an abundant amount of time, apparently, uh, have found ways to break it off. It comes off in sharp pieces, real, real issue for the correction staff. Um, but they're also pulling it away from the wall, so there's a, a crevice. Um, it's impossible to get in there and clean, um, so we've got to remove it, uh, uh, remediate the uh, mold, bacteria, uh, and then we're putting up a, a new product. Well, to do that, uh, there's 23 showers in the building. Uh, we can do it basically at about three showers at a time, which is 
a portion of a pod, so they, they actually have to, to clear inmates out um, and, uh, you know, move around, and we've got to work around uh, their schedule and their time. So it's, it's, it can't all be done at once, so it's why well, it's a little bit more expensive to, uh, to do and portion out uh, as we go. Um, another issue we've had was at the courthouse, uh, an unexpected, unplanned expense. Had a compressor that went down this summer. Uh, it ended up costing us $27,000. Um, we were able to take up uh, within our budget a uh, majority of that, um, but uh, just don't have enough funds to, uh, to take care of the rest of the year without a budget amendment. So, um. so are you asking for... No. Motion right then? No. no. Gotta go to finance. Yeah. Just wanted to make you aware of it. On that uh, go ahead. mold in the shower and that, or is that going to be monitored for a while, or anybody going to recheck that in 30, 60 days? Or? Yeah, we're, we're still putting together the, uh, uh, the program um, for cleaning uh, with the kitchen uh, element. Um, their uh, contractor, uh, Airmark Foods, is also responsible for making sure that the kitchen is clean. However, they, they use um, trustees, inmates, uh, to not only uh, help prepare the meal and serve it, but to do the cleaning. So uh, working with them to come up with, uh, with a better method, uh, better checking method to make sure that uh, the cleaning process is, uh, is being followed through, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll do that as well with, uh, with the showers. And then we anticipate uh, coming back, you know, probably in six months, and, uh, and hiring OEHS uh, to come back and, and do some test samples, just to make sure that we're we're uh, we're hanging in there doing it. They have not, uh, to the folks' knowledge at the uh, corrections at Satellite Jail, they have not had an issue uh, with this uh, before. The building's been there for 18 years, um, so we'll. When the work's all done, would there be a way that uh, the sheriff could have a staff person, maybe every three months or so, just do a visual check on them? The sheriff is re. I. Uh, I'm sure okay. that's what's going on. The sheriff has rearranged his uh, uh, correction staff and uh, got somebody else in charge of, of taking care of, of that. And they're, that's a major part of their duty is uh, ensuring that uh, uh, folks are doing what they're supposed to be doing with, uh, with cleaning, both in the kitchen area and, uh, and showers. So, okay. Any other questions? I have a question for Deb. So is that transfer from General Corp? What's the budget amendment? I know we're not discussing it now, but just... It's a budget amendment, right. so oh. it is a request for additional expenditure authority in the fiscal 14 budget, which basically means it comes from fund balance. There's no revenue. There's no right. new revenue to cover it, so it's just an additional appropriation. So there was a fund balance. So you're not transferring from a different fund. You just didn't have appropriation. No, we're not transferring. You're, we're just asking you to increase the budget authority, authority okay. for general corporate for fiscal 14. And it's after the fact, sort of? Well, we're almost to the end of the fiscal year. Right, what, the spending. We actually did that already? Did we already spend these amount? Yeah. Well, to get through the end of the fiscal year with all of the obligations that um, physical plant has, they will need this budget amendment. I mean, I think they were trying to do what they could for as long as they could to see if they could manage all of the expenses within the budgeted authority, but it's become evident that they will not make it through the fiscal year unless they get this budget amendment because of these issues. Mm -hmm. Thanks. The, the other piece uh, with budget, since it's really, we have with two budgets, the capital asset uh, replacement fund was the, was the second piece, and the, the top portion was the uh, approved 2014 projects, as you folks approved prior to um, uh, the beginning of FY14. Uh, uh, we've made some, some changes. So you can see the actual projects uh, are listed. Um, in terms of actual cost, yes, 603000 we are over our fund balance availability, but if you add back in the DCO uh, award money, we've already received the $20,900. Uh, we've got $120,465 yet to go with this current project, Digital Controls, uh, that I spoke about earlier. You know, we're anticipating we'll get that money by the end of uh, January at the latest, mid-February, which will still be... Uh, allowable to be uh, uh, thrown into the FY 2014 books, so. Questions? Any questions? 
Okay. Now your update on that. Illinois Green Business Association. Green. We we are finally, and uh, it, it, it's. I think we we. We didn't take the summer off, but I think uh, we, we ended up taking a good portion of the summer and uh, part, of the, part of the spring off. We did change. Uh, the person who was with us uh, um, uh, as part of their organization uh, took another job, and it wasn't until probably middle to latter part of September when uh, Cassie Carroll finally said, I'm taking uh, the county on in terms of Brookings. And so we've scheduled now. Um, meetings every two weeks through the end of the year, trying to wrap this thing up by, by the end of the year. Uh, getting a lot of help, great help from uh, other entities within the building. Got representatives from, uh, from various parts. Um, uh, Auditor's office, uh, JJ is actually on the, on the green committee. We've got uh, um, folks from RPC, uh, from the park district, um, IT services, so we're, we're uh, we're picking up speed, um, and uh, you know, we should be done by the end of the year, basically. So, Good. according to uh, Cassie's schedule, so, and believe me, we're going to follow it. Because I remember that being it was supposed. I thought it was supposed to be done in December because it was supposed to be a, a project. But that's fine. I knew there'd be some roadblocks. Any other comments, questions? Is that it, Dana? That's all I've got. Well, thank you. Other business. Anybody have any other business? Mr. Harkey. I just want to say this is your last meeting as our chairman, and uh, despite our occasional disagreement, I think you've been a very fair, very open chairman. We're going to miss you. Thanks for working hard. We know you work hard for us, and we'll, we'll see you around, hopefully. Uh, I hope so. Thank you, Josh. Appreciate that. Any other comments, or anybody want to gloat over the election? No, we can't. Okay, chair's report. Following on to what Josh just said, I, I just want to state that uh, I do enjoy this committee. Out of all the committees on the county, this is the one I've always enjoyed, even when Mr. Beckett was uh, chair. Uh, I never hardly agreed with Mr. Beckett, but he did bring some stuff to the table. I enjoy all of you that serve and, and continue to serve, and uh, Mr. Quisenberry for hanging in there for two years, because I know at first there was some maybe not going to hang for two years, but that's good. I, I think he came to like my style, so he stayed. Yeah, that was it. I think that's it. That's my story. And I do want to say to all the, the support staff that keep things going, meaning the maintenance men, the administrative secretaries, and everybody, I don't know a lot of those folks, but without those folks, this county wouldn't operate. The administrative staff for, you know, keeping things in check and trying to keep the taxes as low as I can, I deeply appreciate that. And I know Dana stepped in. He's got a lot on his plate. It's, it's a new day, and there's a lot that needs to be done. I just hope that whoever's in this committee, if it continues on, that when you look at these things, emergency things happen, and we need the funds, and we need to update stuff because it is getting older. And I've beat that horse a long time, but I really think that that's the way we ought to go. And when people ask me about the county or serving on the county board, uh, I'm pleased to serve here. I really am. It's, it's been a good ride. Uh, it's been interesting. I've learned a lot. Uh, you know, when I started out, I was a grunt. I used to shovel dirt, move dirt, dig holes, redo it. Thought I was in the military for a while, and my kids even talked at one time about getting me a shirt that says, Dad Loves Dirt. And I used to tell them, hold off on that because I'm going into politics. But anyway, <laughs> I do enjoy it. I enjoy being around here. I'm going to miss it a little bit. But I got four dogs to take care of and some other things I want to do and uh, friends I want to visit. And who knows? Who knows where I'll be in two years? I don't know if I'll come back like Mr. Weibel is, but I might. <laughs> so with that said, I do uh, thank everybody and the staff. I, I deeply appreciate you all and uh, wish you all the best. With that, designation of items to be placed on the consent agenda, number seven. No. See, I can never get out with it being correct once. No. Okay, well, no. Then I'll ask for, oh, m nope, Mr. Rosales walked in. I'll ask for an adjournment, please. Or a motion. Josh. Josh and, and, and Mr. Rosales. All in favor? Aye. Thank you.